Hello, welcome to this Concept 4 video. Let's read the concept. Throughout our conference structure, we ought to maintain at all responsible levels a tradition right of participation, taking care that each classification or group of our world servants shall be allowed a voting representation in reasonable proportion to the responsibility that each must discharge. To put it even more simply, and this comes from the AA concept summary page in the service manual, the Australian service manual, I might add, uh, participation is the key to harmony. So if we get the right of participation correct, we create more harmony. Well, to me, harmony and unity and serenity all seem very close to me. So maybe this has a little bit more to do with recovery than we might think. What are these levels of the conference structure that are being talked about? Here they are. Now, this is coming from the AA World Service Manual, the updated one, which is why it looks so zhuzhy and pretty. Um, you might want to replace, if you want to make this Australian-specific AA World Services and Grapevine right down the bottom with just GS, General, General Service Board dash GSO. But either way, we have six levels in our service structure. Got the board at the bottom, along with the GSO, and they go up one level to level five when they become conference members. And we know that we have each board member gets a vote, GSO gets a vote, and the World Service delegates gets, they, they get a vote too. There's 15 non-delegate members who go up from level six to level five. And then the area delegates, and we have 24 areas in Australia currently, uh, they go down from level four to level five to create conference, which is its own level. But even all the way up to AA groups at the very top, each one of these levels, we have this idea of a right of participation, which is why and we had a conference topic about this this year at the Australian Conference to help members maybe gain clarification on this. If you have a home group, only have one, and you get one vote at that home group. <laughs> Regardless of whether you've been an AA member for a week or 100 years, one home group, one vote, one member. Now, um, that's partly because AA is based on the general principles of democracy itself. And we, we basically know, don't we, that uh, any democratic system is based on that principle of one person, one vote. And that's very much how AA works. Uh, so what we need to go hunting for today are some references within Bill Wilson's uh, concept essay work on, on how democratic and how important democracy itself is to both Concept 4 and AA in a more general sense. I'm calling this uh, presentation, you do the work, you get a vote. And this is the simplest way I can think of, of describing this important democratic right. You do the work, you get a vote. Let's look at, um, in terms of starting this exploration of democracy as being the fundamental building block for AA's conference structure, uh, as before we go into the specific democratic rights, uh, let's look at Bill Wilson's Wikipedia page. Now, this is just a part of it, the legacy section. Um, it's quite a, a lengthy Wikipedia page, as you might imagine. But it's a beautiful thing to actually look at Bill Wilson from an outsider's perspective, um, just as we look at our disease through the doctor's opinion, an outsider's perspective. Um, it's interesting to see what's written here. Uh, it, pick it up from the second paragraph. Wilson has often been described as having loved being the centre of attention. And if you've read, read Bill's story, I think it's, you know, it's in there. But after the AA principle of anonymity had been established, one of our traditions, he refused an honorary degree from Yale, Uni Yale University and refused to allow his picture even from the back on the cover of Time. Wilson's persistence, his ability to take and use good ideas and his entrepreneurial flair are revealed in his pioneering escape from an alcoholic death sentence, in quotes, uh, his central role in the development of a program of spiritual growth, our 12 steps, and here it comes, and his leadership in creating and building AA, an independent entrepreneurial maddeningly democratic non-profit organisation. So that's what AA Australia is. <laughs> An independent, entrepreneurial, maddeningly democratic non-profit organisation. So what we start to realise is the more we learn about how democracy works, the more we learn how AA works on its best day. And this, of course, is very much underpinned by Concept 4. It continues, Wilson is perhaps the best known as a synthesiser of ideas 
democracy obviously being one. The man who pulled together various threads of psychology, theology, and here it comes, the one we don't talk as much about, democracy, into a workable and life-saving system. And I guess the system being implied there is the three legacies, not just the 12 steps. Aldous Huxley, focusing, I think, very much on those three legacies, called him the greatest social architect of our century, that being the 20th. And that's reflected in Time magazine, making him one of the 100 most important people of that century. So what we're seeing is, is, is an outside appreciation of not just the 12 steps. As an insider, I love the 12 steps. It's why I'm alive and being able to string sentences together such as they are today. But from an outside perspective, there are many people who are as fascinated by AA as an organisation itself, which is very much built on the principle of democracy. So here are our democratic rights. They are expressed across concepts three, four and five. The right of decision, which as we know is that if I vote you into a service position, a trusted servant to represent my group, my, my, my district, my area, I trust you, I give you my authority to decide for me. That's a democratic right. The right of participation is perhaps the most generically democratic, the idea of if you put in, you get a vote, and it's one member, one vote. And then the right of appeal and petition, if you want to learn more about those, come back for the next video. Um, but these are, you know, the AA democratic rights. We use the word right, I think, quite knowingly in AA. Right of decision, right of participation, right of appeal and petition. These are rights. Um, and if you look at democracy in a broader social sense, people have fought over the history of, of humankind for democ democratic rights, the right for this, the right for that. And so these are things that perhaps we shouldn't give up too easily. And certainly as AA members who keep coming back, perhaps think quite deeply about. And because the concept itself talks about all levels of participation, Concept 4 is as relevant to your home group as it is to our annual conference. So let's have a look at that. AA is a true democracy, a spiritualised society. So this diagram here is how I like to represent, in particular, Tradition 2. Uh, groups dele dele delegate or give away authority to the GSR, the delegate, etc. So, you know, they've, we, we talk about groups having the ultimate authority, but... How do they express it? By giving it away, because it's the most spiritual thing one can do with authority. Who wants to be the actor running the show? You bounce all the way back to step three. Now, there's trust and respect in the middle, and in return, the GSR, the delegates, the board, whomever, consult, consider, report back to the groups. And, and this, of course, is, is explored perhaps in the later concept essays, uh, you know, the idea of the delegates, for example, being uh, advisors and supporters to the board. You know, the idea that, you know, conference has perhaps more authority than the board do, but, but then we trust the board to do all sorts of things for us, and thank God they do. Um, but, you know, this idea of consultation, those that we trust to do things for us higher up, um, those below us in the hierarchy, they, they do report back. That's why the conference report that your delegate creates soon after annual conference in November is such an important thing. That's their chance to report back to you what their experience of conference was. So it, it, in very real ways, it becomes your group's experience of conference. And so you've got this trade-off. We trust you to do things for us, but in return, you're going to give us full information and transparency. It's such a beautiful thing. And what looked at it, look at it that way, and it goes way beyond AA itself. It looks very much like the way any modern organisation potentially can look. But that's a personal member's view. Let's have a look at what the essay says. This is the concept one essay when we're looking at this idea of democracy. Therefore, we believe that we see in our fellowship a spiritualised society characterised by enough enlightenment, enough responsibility and enough love of people and of God to ensure that our democracy, there it is, of world service will work under all conditions. So that's a very powerful sentence. What Bill is saying here is if we actually get, um, you know, 
the democracy within AA World Service right, it will never fail us. Which is an indication, I think, we have to put the rights of participation, decision, appeal and petition very high up on our priority list to give them away, to erode them in any way, um, is potentially taking away the idea of world service working under all conditions. So anyway, we are all confident that we can rely upon tradition to our group conscience and its trusted servants. Hence it is with a sense of great security that we old timers have now vested in AA's General Service Conference the authority for giving shape through the labours of its chosen delegates, trustees and service workers to the destiny that we trust God in his wisdom is holding in store for all of us. So, you know, th th that's really big picture in the clouds type stuff. But I go back to the word democracy is one of the highlight words in this paragraph. To understand democracy and how it works is to understand how AA itself needs to work on a good day. Perhaps it's best. It's a personal member's view, but that's what I take away from that marvellous paragraph. Just to show you how concept four is played out to protect um, AA, at times we talk about, you know, in our conference having two-thirds delegate majority, and that it makes perfect sense, and it's certainly a foundation principle of some conferences, in particular AA World Service. But it's interesting, um, when, when people suggest things that involve, and I'm just using this as an example, that involve taking votes away from those who currently have them within our conference in order to create a two-thirds delegate majority in a, let's call it a manufactured way, uh, concept four usually comes in to calm down the debate and have us remember that democratic rights are really important as well. And in this case, concept four respects the rights of participation on the conference floor. It was literally seen here as more important than the suggested change to the imbalance, which would have probably meant taking votes off those who are non-delegates. And so again and again, we see that concept four is, is something we use to, to rejig or recalibrate AA's focus on what its focus needs to be. Um, so let's go to the essay to see perhaps in more detail why these sorts of decisions come up. No one tells members what to do. And it's so interesting. If you, if you go to the AA website right now and look at the newcomers section, there's a section on what members can expect or what newcomers can expect at their first meeting. It literally says on our website that no one's going to tell you what to do or ask you a whole bunch of questions. And, and that flavour of AA is, a, you know, we're not going to get in your face, is reflected here in Concept 4. So this is from the Concept 4 essay. Bill writes, let's look at another aspect of this participation problem. The final authority for services must lie in the AA groups. But suppose the group sensing their great power should try to over-exercise it by sending in delegates irrevocably instructed as to how to vote on most questions. Would the delegates feel they were participants? trusted servants? No, they would feel like agents and order takers. So, you know, this goes to the idea of an empowered, trusted servant having a vote, representing hundreds of groups in some of our areas. They need to have that independence. Now, for more information, read the Concepts 1 and 2 essays. In particular, they focus on this aspect of let's not turn our delegates into order takers. That's not how Tradition 2 works. Also, uh, section three of our conference charter very elegantly and succinctly points out that it's really the delegate who gets to decide how to go back to the groups, when to go back to the groups for more instruction. It's very much in the delegates' hands because they are the trusted elected seven. It continues, those who put in and do the work must get a say. It's not the group's place to deny this. So this flavour of groups don't tell people what to do. The delegates themselves, of course, could also give the trustees the same treatment. The delegates' power is so great, let's never forget that delegates are literally replacing Bill and Bob in the 1940s and early 50s when they could actually be, and they were, they were the trusted advisors of the AA World Services Board, okay? But, you know, Dr. Bob was on the way out by then and Bill knew he wasn't immortal. So, you know, literally we created delegates to replace Bill and Bob, who acted as the trusted servants to the board. So very much our delegates in AA Australia are the advisors to the board. 
They, they are there um, to provide clarity and support in any way the board and perhaps sometimes the delegates see fit. This is, you know, one of the important things to understand. It's certainly probably why they're at level four and the board are at level six. Not saying anyone's unimportant, but what we're looking at is a hierarchical system that keeps us all spiritual. So with that context, let me keep reading. The delegate's power is so great, and hopefully I've just explained how it's so great, that they could soon make the trustees feel like rubber stamps, just as the trustees unknowingly did to workers at headquarters, which implies that at some point, maybe the trustees were too leading to the workers in headquarters back in the day in America and Canada. So we're really looking at something that's fundamentally important to recovery as much as anything else. Um, I always go think about, you know, the, the actor running the show, that part of the big book around just prior to us taking the step three prayer. Um, it's not good to be an actor running the show, is it? No one likes being told what to do, do they? And so here we've got to learn to stop telling others what to do and overstepping. Um, and in some of the future concept essays, we learn, you know, about role clarity, for want of a better word, you know, how far any of us need to go before we're stepping into the province of someone else who is a trusted servant. And, and you can see why that's really important here. Let's continue. If, therefore, the conference ever begins to refuse the trustees vote in it, and if the trustees ever again refuse to let corporate service volunteers and staff members vote at the level of their own corporate and conference work, we shall have thrown all past experiences to the winds. The principles of allowing a proper voting participation would have been, have to be painfully relearned. So here we are given clear instruction, do not take votes off trustees at conference. Do not take votes off the service workers who actually carry out the needs and instructions of the trustees who, you know, who do oversee things. In our case at the GSO, they get a vote too. And we've learned this through bitter experience. The past experience, we'd be throwing away that past experience to the winds. And it suggests here that, um, that by having to painfully relearn these lessons, if we do that, it suggests that they were painfully learned in the first place. The wheel has been invented, but Bill is suggesting we can always break, then reinvent it again. And, and of course, this is why often you'll see conference decisions that just pull out the right tradition or concept to settle down a change that may actually be nothing more than AA unlearning a painfully learned lesson. And of course, you know, those of us who, who look at what happens each year at conference, I'm always surprised at how sensible and sane and ultimately spiritual conference decisions are. There's something that seems quite magical about having wise heads in a room thinking very much about the good of AA as a whole, being guided by God, traditions and concepts. It's a beautiful system. So we don't see too much of this painful relearning going on, do we? Anyway, Let's continue. Trusted servants rarely put AA as a whole second. Hmm, what's this about? Let's read. Perhaps someone will object that on close votes in the conference, the combined trustees and service worker ballots may decide a particular question. So in AA Australia's case, that would be, let's see, 12 trustees and one GSO, but that's 13 votes. Well, service delegates, I don't know if I'd see those as combined trustees and service worker. I guess the GS of the World Service delegates are service workers, in a way. I don't know, it's a slightly different role. But anyway, moot point. Point is, let's look at the situation of where, on a close vote, the combined votes of trustees and service workers gain a, a, an agreement, may decide a particular question. But here's Bill's thinking, why not? Certainly our trustees and service workers are no less conscientious. I think that's very true from my experience. Experienced and wiser than the delegates. He's talking about equivalency here. Is there any good reason why their votes are undesirable? Clearly there is none. Very strong, clear language here. There is no reason why a trustee's vote is worth less than a delegate's. There you go. Or, or a GSO member's votes or World Service delegate votes. Hence, we ought to be wary of any future tendency to deny either our trustees or our service people their conference votes, except in special situations. 
that involve past performances, job qualification or money compensation. So in other words, stuff to do with paying people at, at the GSO level because they're the only ones who get paid or, or past performance perhaps of board members themselves or GSO staff themselves, et cetera, et cetera. Or in the case of a sweeping reorganisation of the general service board itself, occasioned by misfunction of the board. So there might be a few exceptions, um, but in general, trustees get a vote. GSO, World Service Delegates, get a vote, along with the delegates who, of course, get a vote. You put in, you get a vote. However, this should, it continues, never be construed as a bar to trustee votes on structural changes. So, of course, the trustees are never told you can't vote. So it might... It's, it's a little bit complex the way it plays out, this paragraph. But if we go up again just very quickly, there may be situations where it's inappropriate that the trustees vote on themselves or, 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 or that the GSO uh, at staff would be voting on their own payment <laughs> or something like that. That seems to be what the implication here is. But here Bill then twists or, or at least goes, you know, he does a turn and says, yeah, but if we're looking at restructuring the conference itself, let's give those trustees a vote. They're a part of the conference. It is also noteworthy that in actual practice, our trustees and headquarters people have never yet voted in a block. Their differences of opinion among themselves are nearly always as sharp and considerable as those to be found among the delegates themselves. Now, it's interesting, that flavour of uh, there's never been a block vote based on role within our conference structure, level five, um, is restated in the current AA World Service Manual, which I believe is 2020 to 2023, so it's due for a rewrite 2024. So right up until, say, 2020, 21, when that manual was published, there's never been in the history of AA World Services, US and Canada, a block vote, where, all the, for example, all the delegates got together and voted one way, deliberately, or the board did that. Um, it's just never happened. And that's reinforced, as I say. So that's an interesting thing. This idea of mandatory uh, percentages of who has votes in the overall conference is being offset here by the idea, well, that's great. You could give, you know, every conference two thirds delegate majority, for example. But what Bill Wilson is saying is that may not matter, given that in their experience up until 62 when this essay was written, no one's ever seen a block vote. And that's been reinforced in modern times, at least within AA World Services. Their differences of opinion among themselves are nearly as always as sharp and considerable as those to be found in the delegates themselves. In other words, what Bill seems to be implying here is when you consider AA as a whole, you are a true member of conference. And I think this is why our conference sits at its own level. When a delegate goes to conference or when a trustee or a world service delegate or a GSO team member goes to conference, they cease to be a board member. They cease to be a delegate. They become a conference voting participant. And on a good day, they're all putting AA as a whole first, bringing the voice of, um, you know, the delegate's case, they're bringing the voice of the groups and having, you know, a chance to actually think for themselves as well and being influenced by the other people who are sharing and discussing at conference and the hands go up when perhaps things are spiritual enough. And this is the beautiful thing. You know, on a good day, if we've got our program working for us and God is in the room, apparently it doesn't matter where we're coming from. It just matters where we are. The hands will go up not because we are a delegate. The hands will not go up because we are a board member. The hands go up because God and the spirit in the room has got us thinking in a certain way. And this is how conference works. Okay, we continue. No second class participants. If you put in the effort and bear the responsibility of trusted service, you get a vote. Here's the theme again. There is another good reason for participation. And this one has to do with our spiritual needs. All of us deeply desire to belong. We want an AA relation of brotherly partnership. It is our shining ideal that the spiritual corporation of AA should never include any members who are regarded as second class. 
Deep down, Bill says, I think this is what we have been struggling to achieve in our world service structure. Here is perhaps the principal reason why we should continue to ensure participation at every important level, just as there are no second class AAs, neither should there be any second class world service workers either. And you know, that, that's very powerful. So I, you know, I sometimes go back to when I was a newcomer and some of the group consciences I sat in on where I did feel second class, where some of those old timers were kind of throwing their years of sobriety around. Um, and even though we all got one vote, sometimes it didn't feel equal when we were discussing things. And of course, this works very much against people feeling comfortable and spiritual within the rooms. So uh, and, and it's interesting to think, for example, in AA World Services, how this plays out in real terms. Uh, I don't know how many current staff members there are at the GSO in New York, but I do know they get 15 votes at their conference. Now, that's less than the overall staff numbers, but it's seen as a proportionate number of votes allocated to the GSO given the worth of work, um, the that, that it represents. So that's the proportion or percentage of votes. The value of the GSO itself is, is awarded, 15. And you know, in Australia, it's one vote for three staff members. So it's perhaps a similar ratio. But that's us considering this second principle, perhaps, this second paragraph, that we don't want to create second class service workers um, in real terms or perhaps in their own perception. It's very important that we don't do anything in our service structure to make people feel less than or more than because we know that leads to drinks and hopefully Bill did a lot of thinking about how to create an organisational structure that leads us away from the next drink and doesn't lead us towards it. That's certainly what I tend to think is, is our, that's one of the reasons why we have a structure as we have it is to make sure that it's spiritual enough to protect us all from the disease. So, trusted servants are only trusted because they get a say and a vote. Otherwise, they may not put in quite as hard. Here's another reason. The right of participation is therefore a corrective of ultimate authority because it mitigates its harshness of misuse. It also encourages us who serve AA to accept the necessary disciplines that our service tasks require. We can do this when we are sure that we belong, when the fact of our participation assures us that we are truly the trusted servants described in AA's tradition too. And so there's an implication here. If you don't get a vote, you're probably not going to do as much work. You're going to feel second rate and that may lead to less effort. Who knows? And we're only human, right? Um, and so this right of participation is a protective cloak across a number of fronts um, to make sure that we literally have no reason to fear or, or resent um, and that everything feels equal. And therefore, tradition one comes into here, unity. Or going back to the very first slide, harmony. But just while we're on the subject of voting, just in case you're watching this and you're not a conference member, here's a topic from 2023. It was a beautifully written topic, I felt. One group, one vote is the fundamental principle of Alcoholics Anonymous. We now know why, because AA is based on democracy and Jack Hill, the blind miner, knows that democracy, all forms, is based on one person. One citizen, one vote. This needs to be stated clearly in the AA Group Handbook. Now, conference in its wisdom suggested this topic was rejected as the issue is covered adequately on page 15 of the AA Group Handbook. So the right of participation, front and centre, and in conference's view in 2023, clearly expressed. Well, let's go to page 15. And here is that section. Traditionally, most AA members through the years have found it valuable to belong to one group, which they call their home group. That reads pretty clear to me. What we're not saying is, you gotta. And this is the thing about AA, right? It's the same with the 12 steps. You gotta. No, you don't gotta. <laughs> you read working with others, and it suggests that if a newcomer's resistant, you walk away. You don't push because you may spoil their opportunity to for when they are ready, when, you know, the gift of desperation appears. Here it's the same level of uh, suggestion. All we can say is throughout the years, this has made sense. One group, 
home group. This is the group where uh, they attend regularly, accept service responsibilities and sustain friendships. Doesn't say you can't have a service responsibility elsewhere, but this is our nucleus. And although all AA members are welcome at all groups and feel at home in any of these meetings, the concept of our home group is still remained the strongest bond between the AA member and the fellowship. You get your home group right, maybe a lot of other tumblers fall into place. With membership of a group comes the right to vote. Here we go. At the group conscience meeting on issues that might affect the group and might also affect AA as a whole, and they're often the ones that your GSR brings back from area or brings back from district assemblies and meetings, a process that forms the very cornerstone of AA's service structure. So this becomes incredibly relevant to AA not falling apart. As with all group conscience matters, each AA member has one vote, and this is voiced through his or her home group. You know, it's so interesting. In, in a world where there was a conference topic thrown up because more and more of us uh, state we have more than one home group these days, it's interesting we seem to have less participation in AA's service structure. And if you look at what it's saying here, there is a direct correlation. And maybe this is one of the lessons that has been learned painfully across AA's nearly 90-year history. If we respect the one group, one member, one vote principle, it flows on to having districts and areas opened and groups participating. Okay, um, the cornerstone, it says here, the very cornerstone of AA service structure. How does it work? I don't know, but there seems to be a connection being made there. Food for thought. Um, I'll give you another example of this. I, I spoke to a member who belonged to a hybrid meeting. Uh, it was, he was a home group member, but the group only held group conscience offline. offline. So they, they, it was a face-to-face -face hybrid meeting, but their group consciences were never done with a computer set up in the room. Now, this member I spoke to lived too far away to attend these group consciences, yet he was a member of that group. Therefore, he didn't have a vote. Uh, and I felt that was something that was easily fixed. And I feel it's comfortable for me to share that because no doubt that has been redressed. I don't know. It's not my business. But the point is, it's an interesting thing how deeply we have to go back to think about right of participation, one member, one vote. If you have a hybrid meeting, it's so important that those members who come from far and wide because of the way you're doing it have a vote. Um, and yet it's no one's fault that we miss this stuff. It's just one more motivational reason to know the concepts and to know these principles and really respect the democratic rights that each member has and to express that democratic right in how we do things at the group level. You know, the way it's been described to me, uh, you get your group right and it becomes a training centre for the next delegate, the next trustee. So um, on that note, have a happy sober day. Thanks for listening and watching.